Dua Lipa and Levitating and Lee Higgins here at the Copper Thailand Dessa Football Tournament. Sitting next to me is Mr. Gary Stevens. Good morning. Good morning, Lee. Lovely to be here. Another yeah. beautiful day and life's great, isn't it? For those who don't know you, Gary, you're a former Spurs and England uh, player. So what does coming to this tournament mean to you? Well, you know, Football is one of my greatest passions, mm. and there's, you know, there's four really good academies here playing at Arena Hua Hin, um, and I wanted to come down and have a, a little look at them. One of those um, academies is um, the Academy de Real International, who've come from Spain, okay. um, and they asked if I would take them for a coaching session on Friday evening here at Arena Hua Hin, which I did. Um, so that was good for me because I enjoy my coaching and I utilise my UEFA Pro licence to do that coaching. Um, and so I guess I'm supporting them to some extent totally. as well. But also Hua Hin City, and I live in Hua Hin, they, they have their academy here, so I want them to do well. And uh, no, I, I think it's just a great scene, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think so too, because we had uh, William Robinson uh, chatting with me from the international team, and he said, look, the humidity was is something that they've had to cope with here, but they're learning different, you know, they're out of their comfort zone and pushing themselves and being, you know, working and playing in a different environment. Well having now spent a little bit of time with um, the Spanish Academy um, I went to watch them play in a game at Ratchaburi a, okay. a few days ago as well. Um, you know one of the things that they have found difficult is the temperature, the humidity um, and, and of course you know as a as a footballer you do get exposed to different climates um, but you know I think from their perspective coming to Thailand it's the, it's the first time most of them have been in Thailand so mm. they're experiencing a different culture mm. um, and it will be an experience for them that they will never forget correct it's fantastic I remember as a young kid first time I went abroad with my my Sunday team we went to Holland and Belgium for a little tournament and I can remember that as if it was yesterday and well it was probably 50 years ago yeah yeah. So, so it's an important time and an important sort of growth period for, yes. for any player experiencing different football. Because people wanting to make a big in international football, you know, have to have many skills, you know, not only good football skills, but life oh, yeah. skills. You, yes, life skills, exactly. You know, you need to be able to adapt to the circumstances, you need to be able to be patient, um, you need to be able to deal with different styles of referees, mm. um, and of course, although not not quite fully international but at the moment in Europe in Germany we've got the European Championships going on yes um, and that's underway as we speak there's been a total of four games played the hosts Germany thumped Scotland in the opening mm. game 5-1 um, um, I've seen some of the highlights of the, the Spain game as well uh, I watched that early this morning and uh, they look really good um, and of course later today or early hours of tomorrow morning England are playing their first game so I'll see if I can stay up late enough to watch that as well. <laughs> exactly and also the the team from Chiang Rai is here as well so I think for those boys coming down and playing and being exposed to a, a different set of teams is, is quite exciting as well. Yeah and I've just watched their game because you know we, we're now in between the first and the second game here yes. on this uh, Sunday morning and it was a really good game of football. Football, a high scoring game of football as well. Um, well officiated, well behaved by the players. Um, yeah, it was it was really nice to watch. Yeah, no, it was very, very good. And tonight there's a penalty shootout, but I hear that uh, your penalty shootout rate is quite high. So are you taking part in the penalty shootout tonight? Well, that, that's the big question, isn't it? <laughs> Do I come along and take part in a penalty shootout tonight? I'd like to. I've never taken a penalty on a beach, so that's maybe one reason mm. why I should do it. Mm. Having said that, just to clarify, in my professional days, I was involved in two penalty shootouts, and yes, I did manage to score on both occasions. The second one, which was in a shootout to win the UEFA Cup final for Spurs in, what, 1984. <laughs> so, yeah, do I dare risk that record being exposed and... I don't, I don't know if I can do it. No, I don't think so, Gary. I think you've got to hold on to your 100%, uh, you know, It title. might only be two, but two out of two is 100%. No, 100%. No, you've got to go with it. It's in the record books, right? Sure. <laughs> and, and we don't want that record changing, do we? No. And just quickly, you're a big supporter of local football here at the Black Mountain Football Academy. So what's your role there? Well, at the... Uh, 
Black Mountain Hurrian Football Academy, I'm I'm the head of coaching. Mm -hmm. um, James Goida, who's my colleague, he's always administered it and done all the hard work, really. Um, and James is actually due to be going back to England to live with his family in July. So I'm actually going to take on the whole academy right. myself. I'm going to be organising all those bits and pieces that are important. The footballs, the bibs, the bollards, the markers, the cones, the goals, the nets, the drinks. So I think my work level is going to increase. <laughs> but the good thing is we have so many um, very enthusiastic, some of them very good, footballers up at the Black Mountain Huahin International School and our academy there. Yes. Um, so I have to keep it going because otherwise you. there wouldn't be football for the, the youngsters there. No, well, and I think when your mind and body stops, you stop. So good on you, Gary. Like, you, it's always a pleasure to chat with you and thank you very much for coming on. I know you're eager to get out and uh, watch the next game. So thank you very much. Thanks, Lee. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> The Canadian himself, Brian Adams, when you're gone. This is Lee Higgins, live from the Copper Thailand Dessa football tournament. I think you can hear everything happening in the background, but I have another guest sitting next to me. Good morning, Sammy. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. Thank you so much. It's been quite a buzz around here this morning, hasn't it? Uh, it's lovely. It's lovely uh, to see the excitement uh, around this Copper Thailand Dessa here. Yeah. Are you a football fan? I am. I am. Who do you support? Anybody specific? It's the same like Kun Will at Manchester United, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are being overrun this morning by Man U fans, so uh, I'm a yeah. Newcastle fan, but oh, anyway, yeah, all right. that's for another day. So yeah. tell us how you know Will Robinson. How do I know him? He's mm. a friend of Ryan, I actually introduced him, and after that, um, I'm so impressed with his determination, first to promote uh, Thailand, amazing Thailand, uh, with the various uh, video uh, clips, mm. promotions, and he does this on his own money mm. and his own self-funding, uh, which is really impressive. So that's why I, I think he's a he's a really a wonderful individual that yes. we have to support, uh, whatever possible. Yeah, and what do you do as your day job? What what's your life during the day? I'm currently managing the hotel, a high regency in Bangkok. Okay. Yeah. And have you been to Hua Hin before? I used to be. I used to live here. I oh, was the okay. GM of the Hyde Regency in Hua Hin 2010 to 2015, yeah, so five years. Have you seen a change with Hua Hin over that period of time? Oh, yeah, so much. I think uh, number one, the road is definitely better, mm. even though maybe not necessarily maybe safer, yeah. but uh, a lot more developments uh, from the real estate, hotels and apartments. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's for the for the greater goods, I guess, for, for the city. But what we need is to have more direct flights coming to the city. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. I, I think, you know, we've got a little piece of paradise here that, yeah. uh, you know, that people will just love to come. And it's got every five-star hotel you can possibly imagine. The food and beverage is fantastic exactly. here, and I think by also Will supporting not only you know doing these type of things here, it just helps with getting Hoi Hin on the map. That's right. I think he, we have to really give him the credit for doing that, and and he got all the private sector to help together to make this happen, mm. and also um, we got the. Uh, it's a great promotion for Hua Hin itself, mm. and I think Hua Hin deserves to be in the in the um, in the roadmap of of Thailand tourist development because it's most underrated um, tourist uh, area in, in Thailand. I would say. Yeah, I agree with you, Sammy. Well, thank you very much for coming on board. I know you wanted to get back and uh, check out the action on the pitch in front of us. It's been a good morning so far. Are you going to be at any of the events over the next couple of days? Yeah, I, actually, uh, only today. Uh, uh, tonight I gotta welcome the the VVIP Brian McClare. He's yes. gonna stay in my hotel, so yes. I gotta make sure that I look after him. No, you definitely will do that, and yep. I'm sure that uh, you'll uh, have a lots of great chats with Brian McClare over the next day or so. So thank you very much, Sam, for coming on board thank and you. talking with me this morning. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. David Lee Roth himself with Californian Girls and this is Lee Higgins live from Arena Hua Hin this morning and I've got a special guest sitting next to me, William Robinson. Good morning, William. Good morning. How are you? Very good, thank you. Very good. Now, how are you involved with the Copa Thailandesa? Um, I'm involved with Copa Thailandesa, well, through our academy, Academia de Real Internacional, um, helping co-organise the event, helping with uh, well, some of the logistics and, and just helping with the general structure of the event. And where do you live? 
I live in Granada. Do you? Yeah, in Granada, yeah. in Spain. So tell us about your football background. My football background, um, ex-footballer myself, I managed to work up to the to, to the seventh division up in Spain. Mm. Came through the non-league system, late developer, um, and just well essentially jumped into into the back end of football quite young at 17. Started coaching, and managed to. Uh, start this academy up about two years ago. Wow, what a great achievement. And so coming here to Thailand, what does that mean to you? It's quite powerful, to mm. be honest. Um, we've had a, a, a very difficult year mm. as, a, as an organisation, as an entity. Uh, a lot of ups and downs, backs and forwards, a lot of do we continues, do we not continue. Obviously a lot of milestones having, for example, Isaac Salais go and try at Granada, Stefan sign his professional contract, Alessandro sign his professional contract, but at the end of the day I think it's it's been a lot more downs and ups, but I think the pros outweigh the cons in, in this scenario coming up to Thailand to be able to come here and, and, and spend time with these boys and, and have a uh, an experience I'll never forget. Yeah, that's right. So tell us the makeup of the team that you've brought with you today. It's quite international, to be fair. We've got boys from Australia, America, Cuba, Bermuda, Spain, England, Ireland. Um, everyone comes from Mexico, even. Everyone yes. comes from comes from different backgrounds. And tell us what it's been like playing here in Thailand. It's not been nice. Really? It's not been nice. It's, <laughs> because you've been. It's it's a humidity. Yeah. Um, it's quite wet. There's there's. Mm. It feels like you know you've got no oxygen in your lungs even when you're on the touchline. You know I'm, I'm quite energetic and 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 all the boys quite energetic. But we've seen that we've had to sit back quite quite a lot, not been able to press as high and 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 really have to sit in a low block and and just let the teams play and and sort of drain themselves out really. Yes, but that, I suppose yeah. Look, the humidity is a, is a killer. But I suppose that does teach you how to actually play to different conditions, how to. Think Think around what you've got to do differently. Correct. I mean, it's a learning curve at the end of these. Uh, well, at the end of the day, for these mm. boys, because they do want to be professional footballers, and and if some of them aren't yet, then then they are working towards that goal. And you might not always play in Europe. You mm. might end up playing in Asia. You might end up playing in South America, where the conditions are a lot more vast. Yes. Yeah, so you've got to be able to adapt and think about that. But that's what you've got to do in life, really, don't you? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Well, William, and it's been exciting being here today as well at Arena Hui Hin. So you're here over the next three days: today, tomorrow, and Tuesday. Is that correct? correct? Correct. Correct. And what, how many teams are playing? So we've got four teams involved in the tournament. We have Thai League One Academy side Pratchwap. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Wahin City, who are the who are the local hosts, if that's what you yes. might want to call them. And then we have uh, the Mupa Wild Bulls. So, yes. and obviously Academia de Real Internacional. Obviously, it's 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 been very good to to get a mixture of Thai teams, mixture of levels, um, and obviously quite what we hope to be quite a respective tournament moving forward internationally bring, looking to bring in a lot of young talent next next year looking to, to obviously vamp up the number of teams and the quality um, European academies uh, top Asian academies and, and see if we can make this a, a real showcase event to provide opportunities for unsigned talent You sound very very passionate about what you do William and uh, thank you so much for coming on talking with me today thank you so much for having me. and good luck for the rest of your time how long are you here for in Thailand? We are here in Thailand until the 19th so we have the, the tournament party on the 18th and then we're leaving at 1am to the airport. So. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck with that one, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. No. Simply Red to be with you. This is Lee Higgins and my special guest sitting next to me is Vern Unsworth, MBE. Good morning, Vern. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. That's good. Are you enjoying the football this morning? Absolutely amazing. It has been amazing, hasn't it's, it? Um, I mean, it's the first day and we have uh, the Ekapol Academy versus Wahin. Mm -hmm. Is it Wahin Academy? Well, I would say Huahin Academy. Wh you say Huahin Wahin. <laughs> I say tomato, you say tomato. <laughs> but the present scores 4-2 to the Ekebol Academy, so it's yes. going really well. Yes. And we've got another match after this, uh, so there's two matches a day. Mm. Uh, another two tomorrow. Is it two tomorrow? Yeah, two tomorrow. And two on Tuesday. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. Yes. So it's going to be a real festive event, really. And um, there was a big buzz last night at the welcome party, wasn't there? It was. It was all there. You could feel the. You could feel everything just building up to today. Mm. Uh, it was a really good night um, at the Dusit, the Dusit Tani, and um, we've obviously got the uh, team here over from Spain. Yes. Which is uh, partly controlled by Will Junior, Will Robinson Junior. Yes. And. Um, they are really an international team because they're made up of players from all sorts of different parts of the world, and um, I, th I think this. I think in general, the the whole event is 
is amazing and it's it's all done for the right reasons. Correct. And because tomorrow night you're speaking um, about the, the cave rescue that, uh, you know, you're a key person, a part of that. So what does this tournament and being able to be here mean to you? Well, it, it, you know, we've got the Ecopol Academy here and uh, Ek and four of the boys that were obviously rescued uh, nearly six years ago now. Mm. They're still playing. They're, they're really young men now. Yes. And uh, to be honest, I don't, I don't really recognise them. Yep. It's, you know, how they've grown in, in six years. There's number five in. <laughs> Here. Five it's two. What a, what a score! <laughs> it's like it's Man U versus Liverpool, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. Long. Liverpool five, Man U two. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but the, yeah, you're right. The atmosphere is is great. And, Electric. And, you know, if, if people have got some spare time today, mm. get down here. Mm. Yeah. At least get down here to um, to watch the next match, which will kick off in what about another? Yeah, five thirty minutes. minutes. Yeah, thirty minutes or so. So, and so. Uh, I know that tickets have probably sold out for your session tomorrow night, but what will people expect who are coming to your session tomorrow night? What are they going to hear? Well, there's... Uh, I mean, people have probably read the books, maybe. They've maybe watched the, the film or the documentaries. And um, at the end of the day, there's, there's a lot that happened that people don't really know about or understand yep. and uh, I, I will I, I mean my presentation just really goes through certain days that made a big change to how the rescue turned out. Turned out, yes. Well, I think it'll be a fantastic uh, talk tomorrow yeah, night, yeah. and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And because you live in Maysa, is that right? I live in Maysa, yeah, which is not far from where the boys live and still play football. Mm. Although some of the Mupa actually now live in Chiang Mai. Okay. So you have people like Bu, Mix and Titan, mm -hmm. they're all at um, uh, either a college or a university and still playing the football there. Um, and then obviously some are still in Maysai. Uh, Adol is still over in the, in the States, mm -hmm. finishing off his uh, five-year um, university to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, I'm really Fantastic. pleased. And, 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 the, and the thing is, really, is that the, um, the boys are doing what they they love doing, and that's playing football. Yeah, I think it's a big thing. I, I look, I, is that another goal? <laughs> I think uh, it, it, this is going to be an ongoing thing, I think, for Will here. I think the atmosphere and certainly the enthusiasm for everybody here is going to hopefully propel this forward. Well, what, what I mean, Will, Will Robinson has done a, a, a fantastic job putting this on, and he's obviously had help from yourself, you know, Feast Thailand and yeah. Surf Radio. Um, there's other people been involved, the sponsors, the local sponsors, like uh, Wahin Properties and Prime Steakhouse. That's right. I mean, you know, people have generally joined in, which is what it's all about. And, um, you know, there's some local uh, children's charities being supported out of it. That's right. So hopefully it'll just grow from here. So we'll see you tonight at the penalty shootout? Yep, definitely. So that's at the Dusit Tani at the Namada this tonight, Yeah, isn't it? on the beach. Mm -hmm. um, so it's free, free to watch, but if you want to take a penalty, it's 100 baht. Yep. So, um, yeah, get down there. Yeah, no, it's good. Well, thank you, Vern. I uh, look forward to talking with you tomorrow night at your, uh, your, your function, and uh, I'll be interested to hear your presentation. So thank you very much Great. for coming on board. Thank for you. Thank you. Take care.